Hi, uh, now that the sun's out, I can do a slightly better welcome video. So, welcome to Art 490. I hope you have a fun time this semester uh, playing with your own work and checking out your classmates' work. But really, more important than fun, I hope we have a really productive, useful time and that I, the class, and really mostly you, can all work together to help you uh, leave the School of Art with as effective a portfolio and set of tools and mindset to make whatever career you want to have happen, happen. Um, if you choose to complete your art degree and go pursue some non-art career, that's great. If that's your choice, I'm totally down with that. There's a ton of artists in the world and having art as a hobby, as a pastime, and not having it have the pressure of putting food on your table, that makes plenty of sense. So if that's your choice, I'm totally down with that. But what I'm always kind of afraid of and I want to help prevent if it's what you want is, um, is, is the person who would like to have an art career but just kind of graduates and doesn't know how to do it. Like, like how, how do I make that happen? How do I earn a living doing this thing that I'm passionate about and feel like I'm maybe pretty good at or decent at or you know, whatever I might be? Um, how do I turn that into an income? And so what I don't want to happen is for you to, to not have an art career when you actually wanted one, but you were just didn't know how, afraid you were unworthy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know what your experience in the School of Art and other people and places you've interacted with has been, but an awful lot of the time we artists don't talk too much about actually putting a career together. We love talking about the art, the, the ideas, the craft, all of those things, the aesthetics. Um, and we often don't get around too much to the, to the business practices. Business is kind of a dirty word, right? Because we're pure artists. And, you know, the reality is if you can't earn a living at something, it isn't your career. And again, if that's your choice, that's fine. But um, we owe it to you to, to talk a little bit more about reality. Um, and reality is what we all make it. So I don't mean reality like, let me tell you how it is and this is what you're gonna have to do. You know, it's, it's uh, every generation, you know, from, from boomers to Gen X to millennials to Gen Z to, you know, every generation reinvents what is of value. Uh, we live in a world that increasing so I mean we live in a world where people are starving people don't have food to eat it's absolutely true and it's horrific and you know maybe we should do something about that but we also live in a world where increasingly people not only pay for you know uh, physical world fashion but we're spending money on virtual goods in a sense we've always done that you, you go spend money to see a movie uh, the movie isn't, isn't a thing you, t you can't feed your kids with a movie. Uh, well, you can feed their minds, actually. But um, so the fact that we go into virtual worlds now and start spending money on, you know, uh, outfits for our avatars or whatever we might do, uh, you know, to a starving person, it's a little crazy. But increasingly, that's the reality. So my point being... Uh, when I say help you figure out reality, I don't mean old guy telling younger people this is how it is and this is what you got to do. No, you, your generation can invent how it is, but you still are going to have to find some way to pay the rent. And I hope that I can help you make sense of that. So we're going to organize your portfolio, take what you've done, put it together. And one thing about portfolios that I'll say is um, don't apologize. Don't be embarrassed, your work is what it is. Often we are a little bit insecure as artists and we have imposter complex or imposter syndrome and we feel kind of unworthy. And so it's like, oh, well, here's my work, it's not very good. Uh, never say that. First, uh, as you know from looking at both the, the, the fine art, the gallery and museum world and the commercial world, what you know, the imagery that you see in on packages, in games and other spaces, in television and media, fashion, all of it, um, 
there are, there's a universe of styles, you know, just because you aren't this sort of, you know, precise drafts person like Albrecht Dürer doesn't mean that your drawing isn't valuable to someone. So, you know, whatever your style is, um, don't apologize for it, own it. You know, this is what I do. If you truly believe that you are weak in something and that that's a problem, well, then work on it. Put in some time, you know, take some classes, work on your own, do whatever. Get better at, at something, whether it's a drawing or using a tool like Photoshop or whatever it might be, After Effects. Um, uh, you know, if, if you want to make clothing and you don't know how to cut cloth, then you should learn that. But, um, but don't apologize and don't presume that as someone completing your degree now that you are going to be equal to a master who's been in the field for 10, 20, whatever years. Uh, this is the beginning of your career. That means you have the pulse of a young generation. Um, but, you know, no, you don't have 20 years experience, obviously. Uh, and so just, you know, be comfortable with who you are, where you are, what you can do, what you can offer, and believe that that's going to be of value to some people. Um, and I think my, I think I'm getting overexposed. Hang on a sec. <laughs> uh, maybe that's a little better. Okay. Um, so uh, we're going to put together a portfolio. Don't be embarrassed to show what you've got. Just put it out there. Don't say it's not good enough yet. Don't say when my friend from New York comes in in a few months, they're going to photograph my work for me because they're a great photographer. Take what you've got, get some pictures of what you've got, and make a portfolio now. Again, if you think there's truly holes that you need to address, then address them. Make the pieces that you would like to see in your portfolio that you don't have. Uh, but own what you have today and as time goes by you know you will replace some of the pieces that you're not as uh, don't, don't feel as strong about with newer better pieces that's fine a portfolio like you and your career a portfolio is a living document that will continue to evolve and grow we're going to take that portfolio put it on a website and a website is a great place for a living breathing document because it's so easy to to hit the edit page button or the new page button, add content, uh, you know, adapt content, uh, revise it. And so your portfolio and your website, which is your portfolio to the world, um, easily updated all the time. Uh, I think it's really important, you know, if you become famous artist, that's great. You can hire a bunch of assistants. But um, for, you know, for those of us who aren't famous, rich artists, uh, not having to worry about whether you can pay that designer to update your portfolio, for your website for you. Uh, even if that designer is, you know, your sister, not having to worry about is there, do you have enough money to buy her lunch to get your website updated? Just being able to hop on the thing, push a couple buttons and update it. Very powerful, powerful and empowering. Um, and then there's the whole business aspect thing. So I put up that survey on Beachboard for you to take. Uh, a bunch of you have already done it. If you haven't, go ahead and chime in with your answers. It'll help me understand how to guide the course and it'll give you a little bit of a, a sense of each other. One person said, kind of like to do animation, but I'm not sure how to do that. Um, so I will tell you what I know, speaking of animation, the SIGGRAPH conference is coming up this summer, as it does every summer. About three quarters of the time it's in Los Angeles. It's kind of like LA, LA, Vancouver, LA, 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 New York, LA. It's in LA all the time. And it's a great computer graphics. All the animation studios are there. Last time I was there, which is before the pandemic, but last time I was there, the Sony DreamWorks booth, um, they had a big drawing. Their exhibition was a big drawing space. They had little drawing horses and, and uh, easels with paper and, and graphite and charcoal and stuff. And they had, I don't remember now, if they had animals or humans, but they had models for you and they had someone kind of teaching workshops. They also have HR people there looking at portfolios, looking at reels, hiring, or you know potentially setting up future interviews. Um, so I will tell you what I know about animation, illustration, any field you want to get in. I know, you know, I, I know a tiny bit about everything, but not that much about probably most of the fields. Um, but remember, the School of Art is gigantic, 1,600 majors, and I forget how many faculty, but a 
ton. Uh, there's a faculty member in absolutely everything in the School of Art. So whatever you want to do, yes, talk to me, talk to anybody you can talk to, but also reach out to faculty members and say, can you give me some advice on getting started in an animation career? Who should I contact? What should I be showing? Um, get that information. It is available. Um, also, play the student card. Reach out to the world. Uh, I heard a talk by a guy. He wasn't an artist. He happened to be a computer scientist, but he was a Stanford student. He had an internship at Intel. I don't know if you're familiar with Intel, but basically everything you Every electronic device you own, your, your laptop, your phone, whatever, it's probably got a chip by either Intel or AMD in it. Um, so he's got this internship at Intel, and uh, he shares a cubicle, this Stanford student shares a cubicle with a guy who's, you know, a PhD, yada, yada, yada. And one day he walks into the cubicle, and the PhD cubicle mate says, why are you meeting, why are you having lunch with my boss's 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 boss? And the answer is because I emailed them. So he showed up to Intel, grabbed the company phone book, and he emailed everybody and said, hi, I'm a student at Stanford interning at Intel this summer. Uh, if you have 15 minutes, I'd really love to buy you a cup of coffee and learn a little bit more about your own career and about Intel. So, you know, as I'm sure you know, folks are busy, and if you email a bunch of strangers, plenty of them won't get back to you. They aren't really even ghosting you. It's more just, you know, some people get thousands of emails a day, and there's no way they can even kind of look at them all. So, um, but if you go out and find, you know, 20 people, some artists who do what you do, you like their work, um, if you're interested in galleries, a, you know, a curator or anyone else at a gallery or a museum, um, uh, at an ad agency or a design shop, maybe a creative director or an art director there. Maybe you, you know, if you're interested in doing graphic design or something like that, you could also look at some of like the huge aerospace companies here in Southern California, Long Beach area. Those places are so big, they have their own in-house art departments. Maybe an HR director there. If you find 20 people, artists, HR directors, curators, art directors, creative directors, if you find 20 people who you think are interesting, you like their work, you like their company, you like something, and you say, hey, I, I really love your work, I like what your company does, could I buy you a cup of coffee? If you're, if you're staying isolated because of the pandemic, just ask to, to buy them a Zoom cup of coffee. If you're going out, then maybe offer them the choice. I, you know, I, I could, I'd come out to your place and have a cup of coffee or we could meet over Zoom. If you email 20 people, I'm sure half of them won't, won't reply at all, but if you email 20, you're going to have four meetings with people who do or can empower you to do what you want to do. And when you are asking someone to hire you, to give you a show in their gallery, to hire you at their ad agency, their animation studio, etc., that's an enormous ask. Even if you're great, and you may not be what they need, but even if you are, um, they can't say yes to very many people. They got a lot of people asking. It's, so it's a really, a, you, you gotta do it at some point, but it's a tough, it's a big ask. Hi, hire me. Hi, I think you're awesome. Could we meet up for 15 minutes and you could just tell me about your awesomeness? Uh, first of all, people generally like hearing that they're awesome. So you, you and they have something in common. Uh, you think they're awesome and they think they're awesome. So let's talk about our mutual love for this person. So that's pretty easy. And all you want is 15 minutes of chit chat and you're going to pay for the coffee. Um, so that's, you know, can you hire me as a big ask? Can we have a cup of coffee is a really simple thing. People want to help, but often what we ask for, if it's not, can you hire me? It's how do I get an art career? Which again is a huge question. It's so daunting. Maybe that's why we don't talk about it as much as we should. Um, but you know, hi, can we chat for 15 minutes about your work or how you got started or things like that? Much smaller ask, much more likely to have somebody say yes. Okay, I've been talking for a long time. I apologize. Just a few quick thoughts about some of the things we want to try to do this semester. But my goal is to help you be as prepared as possible when you leave the School of Art, which for most of you is going to be May, and for a few of you will be a little bit later, but for most of you it's, it's a couple, a few months is all it is, uh, as prepared as possible to go start this career and actually pay rent doing art if, if we can.
Good luck. I'll see you soon.